Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson, number 132, well, we're going to have some fun with more anti-patterns in software architecture by taking a look at one called Architecture by Implication Anti-Pattern. Now, you can find a list of all of my lessons in Software Architecture Monday by going to my website, developertoarchitect.com slash lessons, where you can actually view the embedded lesson or actually watch it on YouTube. Most of the material that I use for my lessons comes from two books that I wrote with my friend Neil Ford, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture and also Architecture, The Hard Parts. So let's have some fun and talk about another software architecture anti-pattern. And this one is called Architecture by Implication Anti-Pattern. Uh, what this anti-pattern really describes is developing software without really thinking about the architecture or starting development, ignoring any sort of architectural concerns. And as a matter of fact, we might ask, well, so what's the significance of this architecture by implication? Just meaning it's implying, yeah, there's some sort of architecture there, but we're not, not really going to worry about it too much. We don't need an architect. Well, well, let's actually take a look and see what happens when you don't have an architecture. As a matter of fact, this is a great example of a building uh, lacking an architecture. Now, I'm not sure what's going to be happening with this building, but I do know I'm definitely not going to live in it. Or even this kind of building right here without an architecture. It looks kind of interesting. Actually not. <laughs> you know, there's so many things that we can make fun of when we don't have architecture, such as garage doors. I love this one where, well, uh, lack of planning uh, caused a garage door here with um, rather a unique kind of solution. I'm not sure I would want to back into or out of that garage. Uh, but this one's also really fascinating. I'm not sure what was on the mind of the builder, but clearly this lacked an architecture and I'm not sure hmm, how that garage is actually going to be used. As a matter of fact, speaking of garages, do you see any problem with the architectural aspects of this house? Take a little bit and look. I mean, it looks like a fairly nice house and it looks new. But if you look closely, you'll notice the driveway is over here and the garage door is over here. <laughs> it's quite, uh, quite interesting. As a matter of fact, this particular architecture, which created these really pretty balconies, which of course no one can access, was created by the Ollage of architecture and planning. I just got to just got to love that this sign right here. Who, who would think that that is a good idea? <laughs> you know, without an architecture or things lacking in architecture, one of the things that's easiest to poke fun at is of course stairs. I love looking at different stair designs that are kind of just put together without a thought of architecture. Uh, or even this one, which I just absolutely love. Here's uh, talk about an ineffective fire escape. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, speaking of stairs, how about stairs that just lead to nowhere? I mean, this is clearly a lack of architecture and planning. As a matter of fact, one of the other aspects that link to stairs a little bit is the placement of doors. Imagine just starting to construct a house and here's the door, but without proper planning or architecture, uh, I'm not sure it's going to be pretty safe, especially in the middle of the night when you wake up and all of a sudden go crashing down the stairs. Now, this particular one took me actually a couple of minutes to see what was wrong with it. I'm taking a look at all these chairs right here and saying, okay, there's something funky about the architecture of this building. You know, it took me a couple of minutes, but I did finally find it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's door stuck at the top. I didn't even see it. I was focusing on the stairs. <laughs> now, to kind of end this, this uh, uh, little metaphor here, you can't escape the whole thing about bridges. And I love this bridge right here. Somebody decided to put a bridge, a pedestrian bridge, over this small road that looks like actually a bicycle path. 
<laughs> and of course, the classic example of architecture by implication is, of course, the bridge not meeting in the ends. So when we start talking about architecture by implication, um, when do we need to worry about an architecture? In other words, when should we actually stop and say, I think we should have some sort of architecture in place before we just start coding or figuring out our application? Well, uh, let's go back to a particular metaphor, because if you need to build a doghouse, you don't need an architecture. What you need is a truck so that when you go to the store to buy all the lumber to nail it together, that's all that's necessary. There's no architecture, very little planning involved. But when we start talking about things like large buildings and skyscrapers, the amount of planning and architecture is absolutely necessary for that building and that structure to be sound enough for all the weight, all those rooms, the plumbing, the electric, the elevators, everything. Well, so there's a great book by George Fairbanks uh, called Just Enough Software Architecture, and I provided the link for you there. This is a great book to see um, when should I start considering architecture and, more importantly, how much architecture do I really need for my particular system? It's a great book. It actually kind of talks more about the risk-driven approach and sees risk, how much risk is there. And I'm going to show you some examples towards the end of this lesson on uh, what George is talking about here. But when we start building systems, we are faced with a lot of questions. For example, should I use a monolithic architecture or a distributed architecture for the new system? Because you see, Without an architecture in the place, we might just start coding or imply a certain architecture style. And each of these have different characteristics and support different characteristics. Five stars being the best, one star not really supported much. And so if elasticity, for example, here is a major concern, we might make the wrong choice and not support that. Even things that you say should be mm, relegated to a development team, for example, uh, should I use synchronous or asynchronous communication when communicating between services? I mean, it's, it's not that big of a deal. I don't need that much planning, do I? Well, in fact, it turns out we do. Because if we look at the trade-offs between these two and the implications of that kind of decision, we see, in fact, that it does influence architecture, scalability, and throughput may be achieved or not, even responsiveness and performance right up here, availability, and all of these kind of aspects that are structural and architectural in nature. As a matter of fact, another common one is, hmm, I wonder if I should use orchestration or choreography for my workflow. I mean, that doesn't matter too much, does it? But if we use architecture by implication and don't have an architecture in place, we could again see that these kind of trade-offs does, in fact, influence architecture. Overall responsiveness, for example, scalability, throughput, if these are important factors, making this choice is going to influence those architectural concerns. As a matter of fact, all of these kind of choices that we have to make have some sort of architectural implication and could, in fact, bring our system down. Now, the bottom line of this lesson really is this. When we talk about architecture by implication, if you're developing a simple kids, youth, soccer registration website, you don't need an architecture, folks. This is like that doghouse. There's not much planning that goes into the structural aspects of this, quote, application. However, in most business applications, whether it be trading, finance, banking, or retail, or any of these, these systems become much more complex and do have certain business needs. And that's why architecture is necessary. Whether that architecture is done by a tech lead in a development team or by an actual architect, the point is this is why it's considered an anti-pattern. It can lead you down a bad path. And while the functionality of the system might work, the structure of that system will fail. So I love 
talking about anti-patterns, things that um, can lead you down a bad path. As a matter of fact, in the next lesson, we're going to see another anti-pattern that actually has links to other ones that we've talked about in Software Architecture Monday. So stay tuned for Lesson 133 in two weeks, where we'll talk about one other software architecture anti-pattern I think you might find interesting. Thank you all so much for listening, and stay tuned in two weeks for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.